So last day I asked you to do this question here, right? And I said to you, see if you can draw the picture to represent 2x minus 1. So 2x minus 1 was this thing up here. You see those two x's? And then a minus 1. And then we had an x plus 5, which was this part here. And then how would you actually draw the picture? I hope you got something like this. You've got an x squared here and another x squared. So I see x squared and x squared. Okay. Over here with the 1 and the x, I now want to draw in one of those rods. Now, should this rod be positive or negative? Negative. So I'm going to color it in. Thank you. Okay. Similarly, down here, I'm going to create a negative rod, another negative rod, another negative, another negative, another negative, more negatives. Why is it negative? Oh, good question. Why is it negative? It's not supposed to be negative. Thank you for speaking up, people. What should this be? Positive. Why is it positive? Because we have a, neg a positive times a positive is just positive. Thank you. So, oops, these should not be s colored. They should be white. Okay. All right, thank you. So, notice I have 10 of these white rods, which just represent x. So, I'll say this is x, 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 okay. And that's negative x over here. Now, to complete this rectangle, what else do I need to draw in here? Squares, good. Positive or negative, small, tiny squares? Why negative? Positive times a negative is negative. Excellent. Okay? Now, if you look at this picture, what's my result? How many x squareds do you see? Good. How many positive x's do you see? Good. How many negative x's do you see? One. Uh, just the x's, sorry. One, yeah. And then how many of the negative ones do you see? Yes, there are five of those. Okay. And if I were to simplify this, this becomes 2x squared plus 9x minus 5. Okay. That's what I wanted you to show me last day. Okay. Now, the question I have for you is, I hope you don't want to be drawing this stuff out forever and ever and ever. Okay? So, what's a strategy or a method you can use to multiply two binomials together without sketching? And for those of you who did this in grade 9, you should know. What would it be? Okay, I heard fireworks. I heard foiling. Anyone else use something other term? Anyone use the term called distributive property? Because that's what it really is. Anyways, here's the idea. You can either use this idea called fireworks, okay, or sometimes teachers call it foiling, or the real definition is called the distributive property. Okay, and I'll show you what that is as a quick review in two seconds. Okay, let me close the door. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to ask you to copy this question again. So let's copy this down here. 2x minus 1, x plus 5. And let's see how this fireworks or distributive property or foiling thing works. Okay? So this is what we did. For those of you that did fireworks, this is what your teacher said. Take the first term and firework it. And he does some noise. Pew! I don't know. How does fireworks sound like? Pew! Okay. Like that, right? Whatever. So that's what you get. You firework the first term. So when you firework the first term, see what happens. 2x times x becomes 2x squared. 2x times 5 becomes 10x. Now before we do the next part, can you kind of see what I'm doing here and how it matches up the picture? Look at this. 2x squared plus 10x. That's the same thing as what we have up here. 2x squared and then the 10 positive x's. Right? And then what do we do after that? You have to firework the other term as well. So you take the negative 1 times x and the negative 1 times 5. So what's negative 1 times x? Minus 1x. Negative 1 times 5 is? Negative 5. And can you see where those things came from? Negative 1x minus 5. Those are the last two terms up there as well. And there's my picture that represents them. 
It's the same thing. Okay? That's fireworks. What's foil? It's the same thing. Why do they call it foil? What does the F stand for in foil? Yes, Katrina. First. So can you see how I took the first terms of the bracket, the 2x and the x, and multiplied them together to give you 2x squared? How about the O? O stands for outer. So now I want you to take the outside terms. That's the 2x and the 5. Multiply them together to give you 10x. And then I stands for the inner. So take the two terms on the inside, which is the negative 1 and the x, and multiply them together. And what does L stand for? That's last. Good. And that's just negative 1 times 5, negative 5. Okay? Distributive property, just a more fancy way of saying those same ideas, fireworks and foil. Okay, you want to be fancy and sophisticated? Call it the distributive property. Okay? All right, dear friends. I'd like you to try now to do the ones underneath. Okay? I'd like you to use the method that you feel comfortable with. If you really do need to draw the pictures, you can, but I'm hoping that you can get off that and start using this strategy called the distributive property or foiling of fireworks. Okay? I'll do the first one with you together, and then you try the next ones on your own. The first term, x times x gives you x squared. x times 5 gives you 5x. 6 times x, or sorry, negative 6 times x is negative 6x. Negative 6 times 5, of course, is negative 30. Don't leave your answer like that. Always collect like terms. And in this case, I see we have 5x and a minus 6x. So what does that simplify to? Just negative 1x minus 30. You're done. Okay? I'm going to give you three minutes to try parts B, C, and D. Okay? Those of you at home, try it at home too. Okay. Shh, listen up. Okay, part B, this is what you should be doing. 12 times 3 is 36. 12 times y is 12y. Negative y times 3 is negative 3y. Negative y times y is minus y squared. Simplify this, 36 plus 9y minus y squared. That one, most of you got right, good. Let's keep going on to the next one here. And then we'll do D, nasty D. Foil, first ones, 1 times a is just 1a or a, okay? 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. What's this? Negative a times a. Negative a squared. And negative a times negative 1 is plus 1a or just a like this. And if you were to simplify once again, a and a, that means you have two of them. Now, just to let you know, most math people like to write the squared term first. So I'm actually going to write the negative a squared first, and then I'll put the two a's together to give me 2a, and then I'll copy the minus 1. So that's the preferred way of writing it out, okay? If you wrote it out like this, where you put the 2a in front, and then the minus 1 minus a squared, that's also okay, but I'll tell you most textbooks have it where the highest degree goes first. Okay, D. I saw this. Oh, yeah, I'll distribute x squared plus 9. <laughs> no. I also saw this. Oh, that's 2x plus 6. No. I also saw this. x squared, 3 squared is 6. That's also no. Okay, now, this is the one where I'm going to ask you to please draw something out. Okay? Because I'm hoping that once you see the picture, you will never make this same fatal mistake again. You want to cause me a heart attack? You write down this is equal to x squared plus 9, and I will die. Okay? By the way, some grade 12 still do that? Oh my goodness. Okay, help me out, somebody. What does the square thing actually mean? Paula, yeah. Right. So really, you're saying multiply it by itself. Okay? Now, if I write it like this, now when people foil, they get it. Oh, yeah. Because what do you do now when you FOIL? X times X gives you X squared. Good. Let's keep going. X times 3 gives us 3X. Good. Keep going. 3 times X gives us 3X. Keep going. 3 times 3 gives you 9. So, dear friends, 
guess what? This simplifies to x squared plus 6x plus 9. Everybody seems to forget this 6x. Okay? Now, to help you remember the 6x, okay, you either do two things, ladies and gentlemen. Whenever you see a square, always write it out as two brackets. Because once you write it in this form, everybody knows how to do this. Or, what I'm going to show you visually is, how do I describe x plus 3 using algebra tiles? And I'm going to ask you to please draw this out, because I want you to understand this, and I don't want you to cause me to have a heart attack in grade 11 or 12. Unless you want to kill me. Okay, how do I show x plus 3 using those algebra tiles? Anyone remember? How do I show an x? One of those rods, good. How do I show plus 3? Three squares, good. So there's my x plus 3, right? That's one of them. And then on the other side, it's the same thing. So here we go. x plus 3. Okay? Draw this out. Seriously, I want you to draw this one out. Now, go ahead and fill out the rectangle for me. So what do you actually see as you try to multiply this out? What do we see? x times x gives us what? The big square, which represents x squared. Good. Okay. And this is what a lot of you do then. The next part, you take x times the 1, which gives us one of those rods, two of those rods, three of those rods. Okay. X, x, x. Oh, wait a minute. Didn't I say there are six? Where did the other three come from? Up top. Good. One, two, three, up top. And then uh, where are those little nine little, thi little squares from come from? Nine little squares are down here. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, most of the time when people write the answer x squared plus 9, they forgot that part. Remember, you're trying to build a rectangle here. Actually, this is a special rectangle. It's a square because the lengths are all the same. So please, do not write this as your answer, ever. Okay? Are we clear so far? That's just a review of grade 9, by the way. Here's the grade 10 stuff. Turn the page. What page? The one I gave you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, seriously, here comes the crazy stuff. So please listen up, okay? Patrick, Suleiman, turn around, please, okay? Now, expanding is what we did, okay? That's like that foiling stuff. That's what we call expanding. But now I'm going to introduce you a term called factoring. And what I'm telling you is these are what they call inverse processes. You mean going one way is expanding, going the other way is factoring, okay? So remember how I did something like this, dear friends, back like five minutes ago? And I asked you to FOIL like this, where you get this. Don't write this down, just watch. Okay? Guess what? Going to the right is called expanding. If I were to go from here to the left, that's called factoring. And that's the thing I want to show you today, how to actually factor these trinomials. Okay, I'm going to draw pictures again to try to help you understand this visually, but ultimately I hope that by... Maybe next class, you don't need to show the pictures because you can do this pretty well. Okay, here's the question I have for you. Here's the question. Factor, and it says x squared plus 7x plus 10. Okay, that's the question I have for you. Now, let's do this with visuals first. Okay, I'm not going to give you the algebra tiles today, but I hope you can visualize it. So what's x squared plus 7x plus 10? It's one of the big x squareds, seven of those little rods, and 10 little ones, okay? Here's your job. Your job is to take all these pieces and put them in here to try and create a rectangle, okay? Now, would you actually like me to give you the pieces to play around with, or do you think you can do it? No, no, no. no. okay, let's do it, no. So, let's play around instead with this, okay? X squared, how many of these do I need? Can someone tell me again? Seven, okay. And then how many ones do I need? Ten. Ten, okay. Would anyone actually like to come up and try to do this? 
No. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Can I come up to the one? Oh. So ladies and gentlemen, why don't you kind of do this with me together? How can we put all these pieces together to make a rectangle? Well, I'm going to say this is the center piece, and I'm going to put this in the top left corner. Now, what can I do with these pieces? I can either stick them like this, or what else can I do? I can rotate them around, right? And put them beside like that. So my question to you is, what do you think I should do? How many should be vertical? How many should be horizontal? Just pick a number for me. We're just going to guess and test, experiment. Someone tell me. Five. Five, which way, Bianca? Um, vertical. Five vertical. OK, so I'm going to make five vertical. And if I make five vertical, that means I need two horizontal, right? OK. Oh, man. <laughs> Who's here? Pause. Wait, was Bianca's idea pretty good here or no? Yes. Why? How can we finish this off? Put the squares, Put the squares where? On the, on the bottom? Do they all fit? Yes. Wow, Bianca. Very nice. Congratulations. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and sketch this in your notes, please. Sketch this in your notes. So, sketch it in. X squared. <laughs> ladies, let's focus now, please, okay? And what else do we have here? Five vertical, according to Bianca, which is great. And then, of course, if there's five vertical, then we need two of them being horizontal. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. And then those uh, ones. All right, once you've drawn the picture, what's the actual answer? Well, your answer actually becomes the length and the width up here. How do we describe them? How do we describe this length up here? Well, notice this is just x, and what else do we have? Five little ones. So I want you to draw that as well, please, okay? I want you to draw your length in now for me. Here's your x, and then here are your ones. And what does that represent in algebra terms? That's the same thing as x plus 5. Good. Okay. Now how about the width? What does the width become? This is an x and what do we have over here? 2. So this is now x plus 2. So ladies and gentlemen, remember how I said expanding is like finding the area? Factoring is the reverse process. So you have the area, you're finding the length and the width. Therefore, x squared plus 7x plus 10 is just equal to x plus 5 times x plus 2. There you go. You factored your first trinomial from grade 10 using pictures. Okay? Now, if you don't believe me that it's correct, you can always prove it by multiplying it out yourself. But I won't do that. But you could, and you should get the same answer. All right? I'm going to ask you now to try to draw a picture for the next one. So I'm going to ask you to try drawing a picture for this one. Notice some of these are negative now. Okay, so draw your picture, please, and then tell me what the length and width are going to be. Okay, so try these next two. And if you're done already, keep going ahead if you wish. And if not, relax for a bit. Okay, try them, please. Okay. Okay, part B. <laughs> Help me out, somebody. How would you put these tiles together? By the way, always put your x squared in the top left corner, okay? How would I rearrange these uh, negatives? Help me, somebody. Jillian, yeah. Two which way? Two vertical? Yeah. Up and down? Okay, so two vertical. And then? One horizontal. Good. And then now, what about those two little ones? What do I do with those? They go right here. Yeah. Oops, I used the wrong color, didn't I? They should be green. That's okay. You don't have to use the colors on your notes. Good. How do I say that? Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, right now, Jillian's question is, how do they stay positive? Well, what I'm saying to you is x squared is just this one, right? The negative 3x are these negative 3 rods, and then the plus 2 is the one little squares. Those don't change. Okay? So when you put them here, 
what happens now is you have to decide what goes up here and what goes up there, what goes down here. And that's where you get the change of the positive or negatives. Okay, so let's take a look closely. Mehdi, Brian, focus please. Okay, here we go. What's this here? That's X, good. So I'm gonna draw an X, okay? Now here's the tricky part. You see how this piece is solid? What do you think these two little pieces up here should be then? If this is solid, those two pieces should also be? Yeah, negative, right, okay? So those are two negative pieces. So therefore, this expression is actually x minus two, okay? Now, how about over here now, along the vertical? Well, we've got this x, so that's still x. That's perfectly fine. And now what about this one down here? Is that gonna be positive or negative, this little square? Negative. negative. Why is that negative? Because this piece here is negative. See where it's touching? That part's negative, therefore that piece is also negative. So this becomes x minus one, okay? So therefore your answer and I'm going to ask you to write this out, please. x squared minus 3x plus 2, when factored, becomes x minus 2 times x minus 1. Okay? That's the answer for this one here. Okay, I notice this also makes sense for these little white cubes here, because if I take a negative times a negative, that becomes a positive, and that's why it's white, it's solid. Okay? All right. Let's take a look quickly at this next one, and then we'll say to you, you know what, maybe it's not so great drawing pictures anymore. Let's see if we can find another way of doing this. Okay? Here we go. x squared minus 4x plus 5. I'll start you off. I think we'll put the x squared in this corner right here. Now, it's your job to tell me where should I put those four negative x's. Remember, our job here is to try to create a rectangle. Okay? Maybe what I'll also do for you is I'll go back to my computer program to help you out. So let's reset this. We have an x squared. What else do we have? Negatives. Okay, so one, two, three, four negatives. And we have five of these negatives as well. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, help. What can I do? Someone suggest something to me. Help, help, help. Give me a suggestion. Don't be shy. Yes, Mehdi. Sure. <laughs> you can go to the washroom. Oh, but Mehdi, before you go, give me a number between one and five. Give me a number between one and five. Four. Four. So Mehdi says, let's try four. Four horizontal. If I do four horizontal, is that okay? And then I've got, oh no, okay, so bad Mehdi, bad. Okay, what else do you want to try then? How many horizontal should I try? Three, and then one. Okay, so let's take one of these and rotate. Okay, so I've got three vertical, oh, sorry, three horizontal, one vertical, and then if I put this, um, there's still not enough. Okay, so help me out. Two vertical, okay. And then I'm gonna get four, and you're still left with one. Is a trick question? What kind of teacher would do that to you? Because you don't have enough to make five. You don't have enough to make five, Oksana says. So what if I do one more rotation here, Oksana? What if I did this? It still doesn't work because I have two left over. It's an unfair number. It's a trick. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you. I've got two left over here, right? If I were to put them over here, then I guess I just need two more bars, don't I? No. Well, where can I get two more bars from? It's not here. What? The big X and chop it up? No, I can't do that, sorry. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's one little concept here I hope you understand. Okay, just watch for a sec. If I were to pull a negative one, small little square, and a big square, what is that equal to? Zero. It's like adding in nothing, but I've actually added in pieces. Okay. What if I did this then? What's an x and a negative x? That's also a zero. 
but look what I just did. I threw in two pieces. I didn't change the actual question. See, it's still x squared minus 4x minus 5, but now I've got two extra pieces to play with. Can you now take these two extra pieces and come up with a nice rectangle for me? Yes. How so, Oksana? Tell me. <laughs> How so? You've added in these two extra pieces. Just watch. Don't write this in your notes first. Okay, just watch me. You've added in these two extra pieces. Where can I now put these pieces? Let me maybe rearrange them. Okay, let me put them aside. Tell me what I should do. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? How many vertical? How many horizontal? Five vertical. Now, which five should I put vertical? Should I mix them up and put this vertical too? Don't. Okay? Don't mix stuff up. If they're all going to be vertical, they all have to be the same color. So, Jian, which five do you want to be vertical? The white ones, right? Okay. So, Jian says, let's put the five vertical like that. So, what do I do with this horizontal solid piece? Put it underneath. Okay. Now, does that help us out then? One, two, three, four, five. And you all said genius. Uh, genius. Okay, so let me show you what we actually did. Okay, you can start writing this stuff down now. In this diagram, we tried to mix and match, but we knew we couldn't actually create a rectangle. So one little trick that you can do is you can actually add in what they call the zero pair. Okay. A zero pair is either you taking a solid rod and a colored rod put together, because if you add them together, that equals to zero. Or you can use the little cubes, a solid cube and a negative cube. That together also is zero. It doesn't change the actual uh, value of your expression, but it does give you more pieces to play with. And the reason why you needed to add in a zero pair here is, look, you had all these little ones, but not enough rods to match it up. So here's what I did. And we'll do this together. We put in the five, sorry, we put in one, two, three, four. So those are the four negatives, right? That's what we align them to be. Okay. So I'll say this is negative x. Negative x, negative x, negative x. Okay, I'll give you a chance to draw this in now, please. Please draw this in. I want you to see this visually. Okay. And then that wasn't enough, right? So if it wasn't enough, what do we have to do? We added in a zero pair. So we took this zero pair and we added it in. Okay, add in. Add in. Oops. Add in. When we added this in, what did we actually get then? We got an extra negative rod and an extra positive rod. Now, where do we put that extra rod? We put one of the extra ones down here, which was the positive, and I'll put this in blue. There's my extra positive x. And where was my extra negative x? Where did I stick it? The vertical piece, right? An extra negative x. Can everyone see this? Why did that help me again? Because now I can put my little ones here to create a nice rectangle. Negative, 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 negative. Okay. With this picture now, dear friends, can you help me figure out the length and the width? Please. What's the length here? It's x, yes. And then what else do we have? Five negatives. Thank you, Patrick. So one negative, two negatives, three negatives, four negatives. That extra one we added in, five negatives. So this becomes x minus five. Yes. How about the one down here? What about this? This is x. And then what's this one over here? One positive. Excellent. That's just x plus 1. So ladies and gentlemen, you've now factored this using algebra tiles. x squared minus 4x minus 5 is the same thing as x minus 5 times x plus 1. You are done.
Okay. Now, remember how I showed you, or I was telling you, let's not draw pictures all the time? Because they take a long time to do. Right? I can see many of you are like, oh, so bored. So can you now look at the three examples from above and figure out a pattern? Okay? I'm going to ask you to do the following, please. Okay? Maybe what I'll do is I'll copy them out for you. You don't need to do this, but just watch. Okay? I'm going to say we our first question was this. Okay? And our second question was this. And our last question was this. I'm just copying this out. Just watch me. You don't need to write this down, okay? Okay, just watch. Ladies and gentlemen, here's what I'm going to ask you to take a look at. You see here are our answers. This is x plus 5. Was it x plus 5? Or x minus 5? Thank you, x minus 5. x plus 1. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's what I want you to look at, okay? Look at these numbers, 5 and 2. And look how they compare with these numbers over here, the 7 and the 10. Look at how negative 2 and negative 1 compare with these numbers over here, negative 3 and 2. Now, don't shut out your answer, okay? If you have an idea, just keep it quiet, okay? Look at these numbers and compare them to these numbers here. Can you find a pattern that works in all three situations, okay? Think about it once again. 5 and 2. Using those numbers, how do I get 7 and 10? Okay. Shh. Using negative 2 and negative 1. Okay. How do I get positive 2 and negative 3? Shh. Okay. Using negative 5 and positive 1, how do you get negative 5 and negative 4? Think about that. Think about it. Help me out, somebody. Who wants to suggest what we have here? Oksana, sure. Because, um, like, for the first number, you add me two. For the second one, you multiply them. Okay, stop. So for the first number, which is seven, what do we do? We add the two numbers together, five plus two. Yeah. And then the last number here, you multiply. you multiply. Does that work for the other one? Let's take a look. Um, negative two plus negative one, does that equal negative three? And does negative 2 times negative 1 give you positive 2? Yeah. Okay, last one here. Negative 4. That's negative 5 plus positive 1. Is that negative 4? Yes. Negative 5 times negative 1. Or sorry, ne uh, negative 5 times positive 1. Negative 5. Yes, 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 yes. Congratulations. So, to generalize this, dear friends, you see that number? I call it B, the number in front of the X. And the number by itself, I call it C. Okay, so to factor a polynomial, here's your little trick that you just discovered. You want to look for two factors that what to see. See that last number? Multiply. multiply. Please write this in. Okay, multiply to C, and those same two factors must <coughs> what add. to be? Add to B. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the beginning of the idea of factoring. If you understand this, you are well on your way. Okay? Once again, two numbers that multiply to C and add to B. Okay? That's the trick. Now, before we actually do some of these factoring questions, let's actually practice finding those numbers. Okay? So turn the page, please. Page three. I'm going to ask you, please, to look at this. The product, once again, means multiplying, right? Multiply. So I'm asking you right now to figure out two numbers that multiply to 12, and there's some, meaning they add to 8. Help me out. What could they be? Okay, I heard 6 and 2. Is there any other suggestion? That's it. Good. So guess what? The answer is 6 and 2. Now, for those of you thinking, how did you get that so fast? Well, let me ask you. What times what gives you 12? That's what I usually start off with. Well, there's 1 times 12. What else is there? 2 times 6. What else is there? 3 times 4. What else is there? Same thing, but backwards. So who cares? Don't write them down. Good. Now, if I were to take the individual numbers and now add them together, what's 1 plus 12? Okay, that's not what I want. I want 8. What's 2 plus 6? Oh, 8. Ding, ding, ding. You win. There's your answer. Okay? 
What do you win? You win a uh, prize, and the prize is you try the next one. Okay, now next one. The product is 24, and the sum is... Uh-oh, this one doesn't work. Let's make it negative 5, please. Negative sank. Negative 5. So as you speak French, 5 is sank. Okay, make it negative 5. Okay, go ahead and try to find the combination. Now, if you're not too sure, you want to do it with me, let's do it together. What times what gives you... Oh, wait a minute, this doesn't work either. Let's make it negative 24. Uh, let's make it negative 24 and negative 5. My apologies here, okay? So once again, the product is negative 24 and the sum is negative 5. My apologies. That's good. Yes, I like that. Okay, help me out. What times what gives you negative 24? 1 times 24, close. Okay, 1 times negative 24, or, or, no, switch it around. Or negative 1 and positive 24. Good. It's a little bit more complicated than negatives, okay? Right? Think about when you multiply two numbers together. One of them has to be negative. The other one has to be positive. Okay, before you do negative 3, how about negative 2, right? How about 2? 2 and what? Negative 12, yeah. Or negative 2 and positive 12. Lawrence, what's the next one you said? Negative three and eight, or also positive three and negative eight. I'm just gonna no. Okay. Keep going. What else is there? Four and negative six. Good. And then negative four and positive six. Okay. Good. I think that's it, right? Now, one of these combinations, when you add them together, gives you negative five. Which one is it? Well, what's 1 and negative 24? That's negative 23. No good, right? Bad. That's also bad. 2 and negative 12, that's negative 10. Bad. Negative 2, 10, bad. It's going to be one of the 3 and 8s. Which one, though? First one, second one, which one? All right, I want negative 5, right? So guess what? That would be the first combination. So your answers are 3 and negative 8. Okay, let's continue to play this game. You can win big prizes. Try C, D, E, and F on your own right now. There's a mistake for E. This should be actually negative 64. Okay, that makes it work now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for the sake of time, I want to actually finish this off really quickly now. So let's try this together. Now, can I give you a hint of how to do some of these two? JC, focus please, okay? Brian, help me. Shanaz, you with me? Hey, listen up, okay? All right. Now, there is an easier way of doing this instead of listing them all out, okay? Can you see how this number here is really, really small? One is small, okay? That means that the two numbers that you're looking for are really close to each other. That's a hint. So what times what gives you 20 and those two numbers are close to each other? Five, four, five. five and four. Good. So if you find already five and four, now the question is which one of these should be negative? Four? four? Good. Five? Four. Four. four, yeah. It's five plus negative four is one. So there you go. 5 and negative 4. Okay? Next one here. Think about what times what gives you 36. And the sum must be... Nine. Say it again. 9 and 4. Good. And one of them has to be negative. You know because the product's negative. So let's make 9 negative, And that would be right. Good. 9 and 4. Okay? Now, part E. When the sum is zero, what does that mean about those two numbers? They're the same, except one must be negative, negative the other must be positive. Good. Negative 8 and 8. And the last one here, the product is 36 and the sum is negative 12. Help me out, somebody. Yeah, Katrina. 
negative 6 and negative 6. Bravo. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is why you need to know your multiplication table. Okay. If you don't know, come talk to me afterwards. I'll give you some practice for the multiplication table. Okay. Because I want you to be able to find two numbers that multiply to a certain number. Okay. Now, how does this help us with factoring? Here's the big thing for today. Okay. So perk up and listen for the next two minutes because this is the big thing for this section. You understand this? The rest of this section is easy. Are we ready? Okay. Here's your question now. Factor this. So really what you should be asking yourself is this. I want to find two numbers that multiply to 6, and those same two numbers add to 5. Help, help, help. What are those numbers? 2 and 3. Excellent. Because it's 2 and 3, what you actually told me then is that this is equal to x plus 2 times x plus 3. You're done. You factored. Now, can I just double check this with you by drawing the picture so we can actually see how this connects? And this will be the last picture I draw for today, I promise. Okay. Remember how we draw x squared plus 5x plus 6? That means we have one of these big x squareds. And I'll draw the big x squared in the top left corner. Okay. I have five of these x's, these rods. How should I split them up? How many should be vertical? How many should be horizontal? Three and two. Three and two. Do you see where that three and two came from then? Right? Here's my three. Here's my two. Right? That's five x's. And then what's left over? Well, there's still six of these little ones that I got to put into this picture. Well, guess what? They go right here. Pretty little picture. You've drawn a rectangle for me. Last step, what is the length and the width of this rectangle? I'll go up to the top to draw the length. It's x plus 3. Well, look at that. That's one of the factors that we just did. And how about the one vertically? There's an x, and we have 2. Oh, look at that. That's just x plus 2. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Yes, Jillian. Switch. The question is, does it matter if x plus 3 and x plus 3 are flipped around? No, because it's multiplication, right? 4 times 3 or 3 times 4 is the same thing. The order there does not matter. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's just do b and c, and then maybe I'll call it a day for now. How does that sound? Yeah? Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'd like you to try to do this. What we're trying to find out now is, once again, two numbers that multiply to what number here? Negative 24. And those same two numbers have to add to negative 2. Go ahead. Have some fun. Okay, and if you finish this one, try part C, and if you finish those, maybe you can draw the algebra tile pictures, and if you don't want to, look at your neighbor to double check that they're okay as well, okay, and then I'll put your homework assignment underneath here then, okay? By the way, some of your homework, you will be required to actually draw out the algebra tiles. I want you to be familiar with that, please, okay?
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is your homework assignment. Please copy that down, and then in a few moments, I'll give you the answers to B and C. Now, dear friends, I will know if you have done your homework assignment on Friday very easily, okay? If you can find two numbers that multiply to a certain number and add to a certain number, that's pretty much all you need to do, right? That's the shorthand way of doing things. So next day when you come, I'm going to finish off this page of notes, and then I said I was going to give you an in-class assignment to work on as well, all right? <laughs> So, it's not Christmas yet. So, we're allowed to use our notes for the in-class You're allowed to use your notes for your in-class assignment, but I'm hoping you do not need to use your friends. I want you to try it on your own first, okay? Okay, don't pack up yet. Here are the answers. What times what gives you negative 24 and add to negative 2? Negative 4. Negative 6 and 4. So, guess what? If you want to do this really fast, it's x minus 6, x plus 4. Done. Okay? Next one over here. Two numbers that multiply to negative 12, they add to negative 1. Help, help, help. Negative 6 and? Oh, wait. Okay, what? 3 and 4, Stella says. That's almost right. Which one's negative? The 4. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before you go, one last thing I want to show you. You can just watch me. You don't need to write this down. Just watch after you got the answer. Remember how I said these are what they call inverse relationships? So we're just going backwards. Well, if I were to take this and multiply this out, just watch. You don't need to do this. X times X is X squared. X times negative 4 is negative 4 X. 3 times X is 3 X. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. If I were to simplify this, what's negative 4 X plus 3 X? Negative X minus 12. Guess what you see? It's what I started with there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, do some homework. We'll see you Friday.